All right. Hey, everybody. Let me know that you can hear me all right. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll get rolling. I realize now that uh, I have to hit start on my camera and then I still have to hit start on my computer. I forgot about that. This is only my second time doing the live stream uh, this way, but that allows me to do the, uh, the back camera on my iPhone. So you guys hear me all right? Make sure you can hear me before I... Uh... Ah, good. All right, Sandy. Thank you for letting me know that you can hear me. All right, I'm gonna start out today by throwing some uh, um, some tumblers. I threw this one here just a minute ago, just to get uh, just to get the gauge set, um, and uh, based on the size of a tumbler that I have in the house that I really like that I use all the time. And so uh, I'm gonna start out by throwing some of these. I have about 25 so clay balls for these. I have some clay balls for some cereal bowls. I have some handles already uh, extruded that I will attach and then pull off them uh, off the mugs. So it really just depends on what all we get into, how long it takes to do all this, if we'll get to all of it or not. So, all right, cool. Glad you guys can hear me. <laughs> yeah, I, I, Daryl, I'm I'm definitely not going to turn the air conditioner off because uh, I'm sweating. And I have it set on 68, so <laughs> uh, I know this is not the hottest place in the country right now, but uh, it's hot enough. So, all right, well, I'm going to, like I said, get started on throwing these, um, and you guys can definitely interact, ask questions. Uh, I'll be walking uh, uh, back and forth to my rack over here to put the pots on the rack when I, uh, when I get a couple of them made. Um, but uh, still, like I said, I'll just be a second back and forth uh, to do that. But I can, like I said, interact with chat and ask, answer questions and, uh, yeah, any specifics about what I'm actually doing or anything else uh, pottery related. So let me grab some more bats. Welcome, Christina. <laughs> Martha, yeah, I can show that, definitely. Um, I should, uh, as far as the close-up, my tripod may only get so close, unless I can change the, uh, I may be able to uh, do zoom in on the, the pot as I'm making it here. So let me uh, let me get this set here. Let me do that. There we go. It may be just a touch grainy that way uh, because of zooming in, but uh, at least you guys can see a little bit closer up while doing that. So. Uh, Daryl, yeah, uh, I don't know for sure that the electric uh, kiln problem is resolved. I, I did all the tests I could. I'm getting, I am getting current to the middle section of the kiln. Um, I just have never seen them glowing in all the visual tests I did, which was strange. Um, but all I do is bisfire in that kiln right now, so it doesn't, doesn't matter quite so much because uh, when I bisfire, of course, it's going to a considerably lower temperature. And uh, it's been bisfiring just fine since replacing the elements. So um, it's working. I don't know that it's working perfectly, but. Hey, Carter. Good to see you, buddy. Almost pulled too much in that one little spot right there. 
That would have been nice. First pot on the live stream. I collapse it by pulling too much. Have to be a little careful with that one there. Yeah, I got my gauge set. Uh, like I said, I just based this off of the size of a tumbler that I already have that I use. Um, this is a pound and a quarter of clay. And uh, I can measure this for you. I measured it with my shrink ruler, but this is seven and a half by uh, just a little bit over four, maybe four and an eight, just so you know. Alright, how I'm doing the bottom on these, uh, I do a couple different types of bottoms on pieces. If it flares out at the base like this one does, a lot of times I'll take that and I'll, I'll hold my rib, you know, kind of like this but in the other direction so that I, I create a, a nice even uh, line all the way down to the bat. And then I'm going to take the point of this, add a little bit of water, and I'm actually going to stick this up underneath as it's spinning and then turn the rib like this and that'll roll that clay up and at the same time I'm having my thumb and my middle finger on my left hand to kind of help even and roll and smooth that out as I do that so add the water go up underneath roll that up and then my thumb and my my middle finger do the rest and then I go back underneath again with this rib to kind of undercut that and uh, and then these I put the little uh, Kind of decorative lines plus they have the function of allowing you to grip them I do that in the middle and I do that with the back side of this rib because it's got a nice little fat rounded part there I start with one about halfway up and then one below that and one above it Uh, board set up over here. So I'm going to get some long boards and put over here so I can put uh, multiple pots on the board and then carry out that out to the back of my shop. So let me go grab those. I'll be right back. running a little low on space here inside my shop <laughs> so all right there we go hey Reggie or peg whichever one it is uh, these uh, are one and a quarter pound. Welcome, Jen. Hey, Andy. Good to see you. I'm glad it helps. Thanks for being here. Hey, Martha. You're very welcome. I'll show it again here. Hopefully, this time I'll pull it and not not almost pull the pot in half while I'm doing it. I also got a little bit stiffer clay to make these because I wanted to be able to uh, pull them fairly thin and to uh, uh, 
with them being tall and skinny it just helps a little bit I don't have to fight the clay as much to uh, bring it in like this if it's softer you have more of a challenge to bring that clay in it doesn't uh, doesn't resist against you as much and it just creates more of a challenge so So you can see the base now, there's clay there but it kind of flares out a little bit. I want that to kind of be at like just a straight angle. So I, I start out by just taking this tool and making that, cutting away that extra that's right down there at the base. And now I'll sh basically shape the, shape the body of it. Make sure it's where I want it to be up to my gauge. And then come back and do that bottom. And then do the grooves in the midsection. Yeah, for some reason, tumblers weren't even on my list of things to throw for this wood firing until this morning. I looked over and I'm like, I'm looking at the tumbler that I had in my shop, and I'm like, oh, I don't even have any tumblers. <laughs> uh, let's see. Nuku Ceramics. Watching your live while graffitoing mugs. Can't get any better. Thank you very much. Uh, Luann, how do you keep from hitting your stick when taking the pot off the wheel? Uh, you'll probably notice that when I, uh, of course the bat pins are in two places, so when I get ready to, to take the pot off, I actually spin it so that when I take the bat off from right here, I, it picks up and then I pull it this way, so I pull it away from the gauge, so that the, the, the bat pin is always to my right here and pushed up, you know, and so when I, when I, when I pry this loose, then I pull it away from the gauge. Uh, just do that out of habit now, but yeah, you have to teach yourself how to do that so that you don't hit the hit the pot on the gauge while you're doing that. Luann, you're welcome. Uh, the point on the gauge, uh, these are seven and a half tall, so it's it's set. I mean, literally, I mean, I can show you when I when I throw the pot. I mean, it comes within probably an eighth of an inch of that stick. Um, I get it pretty close. You don't necessarily have to, if you throw to a gauge, you don't necessarily have to get that close. Um, I just have thrown enough to a gauge that I, I like to do that. Hey Heather, uh, this, uh, what kind of clay is this? This clay is uh, Oka Medium. It's from Starworks here in Star, uh, about 15, 20 minutes from my house. Uh, it's a North Carolina based clay uh, so I love using it for my my wood firings I constantly battle with the aesthetics versus functionality of items. Uh, these have a little bit of a poor function in the sense that they'd be hard to clean because of how narrow it is in the middle. Uh, but I like the aesthetics and I mean the, the it being narrow in the middle is a function of being able to hold it easier. Um, but I know it's not easy to clean that way. Um, but uh, I like the aesthetics so I figure anybody who has them 
has some sort of bottle brush they can clean it <laughs> with. <laughs> so. Yeah, so you can see right here, I've got the, the bat pin here. I'll pry straight up and then move it away from the bat, uh, the, the gauge and then lift. Uh, let's see. Hey, Emily. Found you through JTP Collab. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah, that was a, that was a lot of fun, and hopefully he'll uh, he'll be coming back. He uh, he's probably not going to build a wood kennel of his own. He said, "Why do that when I can just come to North Carolina once a year?" So, <laughs> local uh, Reggie, local art center firing their wood kiln July twenty third. Uh, Awesome. Yeah, side firing is, is fun. Oh, yeah, that reminds me I don't really have anything to side fire in this one. Um, maybe I'll have to just take a couple cups and put them on their side just for fun. Uh, Christina, are, uh, am I wood firing to cone 10? Uh, it goes a little bit hotter than that. I get the, the uh, back of the kiln, which is the cooler part in my wood kiln, gets to cone 11 is down and 12 is usually soft is what I want. Uh, the front 13 is pretty much down, but it's still uh, still visible as far as you can see underneath it. Um, so um, it's it's definitely hot. Definitely, that's one of the reasons I like this clay because it can handle that kind of temperature. Um, of course, a lot of clays can handle a higher temperature in a wood kiln because it fires so much slower than uh, than electric or gas. But you, there's still a limit, you know, on clays what they can handle. I know most of you know that I've been uh, doing only live streams for the last about month or so because of having to prepare for the wood kiln and uh, appreciate y'all being here and I will get back to more produced kind of videos after this. Uh, I know some people really like the live stream, some people prefer the other kind of videos. Um, I will tell you it's kind of interesting to note that uh, a little inside baseball uh, I noticed my subscriber uh, count as far as how many subscribers I'm gaining on a on a uh, I guess a weekly or monthly basis and my uh, revenue even though I've been putting out videos live streams the uh, both of those have dropped uh, significantly in that amount of time uh, and so I think it's because the the way YouTube handles live streams versus videos, uh, they don't get the same kind of ad revenue, even though I've gotten a good amount of views on my live streams. Uh, I think it's just the way that they monetize live streams versus videos that are uploaded. Um, so, interesting fact inside baseball for you there. I don't know all the details of how that works, but I just know that uh, it's changed on my end. <laughs> but it's more important at this point for me to uh, do some live streams so that I don't have to do the editing so I could get all my pots made for the for the firing. Uh, Daryl, uh, did John get high fire clay? Yeah, he bought some uh, he uh, bought some clay from Continental Clay that was for uh, high temperature. Uh, so that's what he brought with him. He had like three or four different, maybe maybe even five different clays that he was trying out uh, in my gas, in my wood kiln. Um, so some of them looked really nice, uh, others not so much, but uh, they all had a varied look for sure. The, uh, the bee clay looked really good in my gas kiln. Um, Almost too good. It was almost like too perfect, but it was really smooth and really nice looking.
Uh, yeah, John, wood, uh, porcelain definitely works in a wood kiln. Porcelain is really high fire clay usually. Um, I've got have somebody that's coming for this wood firing that's actually uh, has bought some. Uh, I guess it's called half and half. It's half uh, uh, phoenix and half porcelain from high water, I believe. And so. Uh, Uh, Heather, do wood-fired pieces need to be bisque-fired to go in? Uh, no, they don't. Uh, most people that wood-fire, or a lot of people that wood-fire that I know, uh, actually only do one firing. They uh, make pieces and glaze them while they're green, uh, usually before they're dry, uh, and then just uh, load them in the kiln green and, and fire. Uh, I still bisque-fire everything uh, because of the way that I've glazed and the uh, for wood and for gas kiln, uh, I'm just it's easier for me to bis fire to take the time and expense to do that uh, just because it makes my process more seamless. I don't have to vary uh, the, the the glazes that you need to use for uh, glazing greenware. You have to have them a lot thicker than you do for bisqueware. And so I use a lot of the same glazes for gas and for wood, and I don't want to have to mix two different batches, or I don't want to have to, you know, make them thicker or thinner as I change from one to the other. Uh, so I just bisque fire everything, and definitely makes it a little easier in some respects because handling everything bisqueware is definitely easier. And but if you break something in greenware while you're loading the kiln, you can just put it in a slip bucket and start over so that's the benefit and you don't have to spend the time or uh, money to bisfire everything but there's advantages to both I mean there are people that uh, single fire in electric kilns too uh, uh, Stephen Hill is a great example of that makes some amazingly beautiful pieces and he just single fires everything in, uh, to cone probably six five six range so Alright, let's see. We got uh, one more and then I'll carry this board out. Butterbean, have you thought about hiring an editor for some of or all of your videos so you can focus more on pottery side of things? Uh, I don't uh, don't know that I, I haven't really thought about that. <laughs> I don't think YouTube is that profitable uh, in the sense of the what I make off of the videos, but I would love to hire an apprentice, to a uh, part-time apprentice, to come work with me. Uh, so that's that's something I would love to do. But I don't. Uh, a lot of apprenticeships, at least the ones that I know of, usually offer housing and all that kind of stuff, and I definitely can't offer that. And at the time, at the moment, I can't offer a full-time apprenticeship either. So I would be interested in having somebody as a part-time apprentice uh, but I have to get through the process of figuring out what that's going to look like and then finding whoever that is so
Okay, I'm gonna carry this. Uh... Thank you, Butterman. I'm back. Uh, does your clay have grog in it or sand? Uh, it definitely has some grog, John. Uh, the with wood firing, a lot of times it's better to have a bit a bit of grog in the clay, uh, especially if you are single firing, which I don't. But you'll find that a lot of higher temperature clays will have some grog in them. not definitely not something it has to be but as a general rule uh, let's see you're participating in your first wood firing in Western North Carolina in a few months yeah Heather you can definitely uh, I don't know if there's any tutorials on glazing greenware but you could also uh, just line pieces with a glaze and leave the outside raw and then you can let the, it depends if it's a salt glaze kiln or just wood fired. So there's different effects that you'll get if it's left raw on the outside. And you could always try glazing a piece of completely dry greenware. There are definitely several issues that you can have with that, but uh, that's more similar to glazing bisqueware. But it soaks up a, a lot of moisture that way and pieces can fall apart when doing that so Uh, noticing your sponges. Do you cut up larger sponges to use during throwing and leave them larger for cleaning up? Yes, Sandy, I do. Uh, the sponges I used to buy were from Lowe's Hardware, and they had, uh, they were called Proform Plus, I believe, uh, or Pro Plus. Yeah, Pro Plus, I think. But either way, they were grout sponges. Uh, this is one of those from Lowe's, and this is a good quality one, but I have noticed some of the more recent ones I've purchased, 
the quality of the sponge material has gone down. So yeah, this is a half of a sponge, so the full one would have been this big. And then this is a quarter of a sponge uh, that I use for throwing. But they do have uh, the last sponge. Somebody brought me a sponge from Ace Hardware that was basically the same type of sponge, not from the same company. And it was, it had the quality, the feeling of quality as the ones that used to from Lowe's Hardware. So if you go look for, uh, I think it was Armley or something like that uh, from Ace Hardware, a grout sponge or masonry sponge. Like I said, they're in a huge block, you know, and then you can cut it up. All right, Lewis, welcome. You're very welcome, and welcome from Alberta, Canada. I figured that's what that means, not Albert. I lived in Toronto for a year. And then I also got to visit British Columbia while I was there as well. Vancouver and Vancouver Island. It was really cool. Long time ago, but that was really neat. Grass Valley, California. Welcome, Jackie. What about sharing an apprentice between a few potteries? Uh, oh, you mean uh, work for me part of the time and then another shop part of the time? Yeah, that, uh, that would be a possibility if there were other shops that needed an apprentice part-time as well. So, but... Then you just get into logistics there of having to share somebody with another shop that you got to coordinate schedules, which I would have to coordinate schedules anyways, but... Uh, uh, I would I would leave it up to the person that's that's the actual apprentice to decide if they wanted to work for multiple shops or just for one part time and then find something else to do uh, part time. Uh, Margaret, yes, uh, these are seven and a half inches tall and about four inches wide, maybe a little over four, four and an eight. Yeah, Sandy, it's funny that uh, finding a good sponge can be tough. Trust me, I, if, if, you, if any of you have been throwing for any length of time, <laughs> we, get, we become sponge snobs. You know, you, you got the kind of sponge you like, and that's what you want to throw with, and um, I'm no different, so. They're not expensive, really, no matter what kind you get, but just finding one that's good quality. And I'd, I'd pay a whole lot more for one that I knew was good quality consistently than, uh, than a junky one. Uh, 
Yeah, RB charger. I, I, I showed the foot earlier, but I'll, I'll do it again here. Um, let me get that pulled just a little bit more. There we go. We'll zoom in so you can see. So what I do is after I finish throwing, I've just pulled that with my finger from here up. Now I'm gonna take my rib and clean off the extra clay down there to get it just straight down to the bat where it's got a clean line. Uh, then I will shape the rest of the tumbler. And then I'm gonna come back with the point of this tool here and I'm gonna stick it up underneath there and then kind of turn my rib up use my thumb and my middle finger on my left hand to kind of round that as I lift that up they're gonna kind of help round that over and then I'm gonna go back underneath with the point of that rib to kind of undercut that just like that and then I use the the heel of that rib there to do the uh, ribs or grooves in the uh, in the midsection. Going back to sponges, uh, I used to use those round sponges that were like just the pottery sponges you buy in a kit or whatever, and uh, they would. It's funny because they would be flatter on one side than the other. They'd be like one rounded side and one flat side, and I threw so much in my early years that I, if I set the sponge down and I set it down like upside down, when I went to reach for it, my mind would be like, oh no, my sponge is upside down. Um, that's when you know you're getting into a, <laughs> a groove of throwing that's uh, pretty consistent when you can, you just reach for your sponge and you kind of notice in your mind that it's upside down when it's, it's just a round sponge that's, you know. But even this one, I notice, you know, because I have the corner here on this one versus the cut side, and I like it sitting like this on my wheel. So I even notice it still today. So, Oh, Lisa, welcome from Wales. Uh, let's see. Yeah, mud tool sponges, I've never used one. I, I uh, They seem really flat, and I like a sponge that could soak up a little bit more, but I've never used one, so they could work better than I think. So, uh, let's see. You can uh, really tell that. Thank you, Butterbean. All right, Harvey from Puerto Rico. Somewhere I'd love to visit. I've never been, but... <laughs> Still working on wearing out a round sponge you bought six years ago. Well, that's a good sponge then, Daryl. If you either that or you don't throw a lot. <laughs> I'll show that uh, foot again uh, for you, Jackie. Yeah, John, thank you so much for stopping by. Yeah, Daryl, uh, when John was here, I showed him how to make that foot, and uh, after he got back home, he uh, he called me, and he's like, man, he said, I really love that technique for making a foot. He said, I think I'm going to start doing that more often. So, yeah, he learned things from me, and I learned things from him while he was here, so it's all good. That's how it's supposed to work, right? Jan, welcome from Norfolk, England. I visited England as well about uh, over 20 years ago now. It was a lot of fun as well. I don't know where Norfolk, Norfolk, England is, but I'd have to look that up. All right, so on that foot, like I said, I have the spot here where I've been throwing with a finger, so it kind of curves out. So I'm just gonna, like I said, take my rib to get that a clean line. Then I'm gonna shape 
the rest of the tumbler before I make the foot. Add the water and then, like I said, just stick the point up underneath there, lift it up, round it with my thumb and my middle finger, and there we go. I add a little bit of water to the midsection before I do these ribs. That's why I do that sponge on there. I'll dip it in my water and then add a little bit of, just to make it a little bit smoother for putting those ribs or grooves in the center. Getting into some of my old bats here. This is like a plastic coated masonite bat. Oh, uh, Jackie, the, the bats I normally use, they're a, uh, a tempered hardboard. Uh, they're available at different hardware stores, mostly in the Midwest. So depending on where you live, I can't remember where you said you were from. So, uh, let's see. I was going to make a wood tool with a foot bead, but I will try your technique. All right, uh, RB Charger. Yeah, definitely give it a shot. I mean, nothing wrong with using a wood tool to do it either, but... Uh, yeah, I, I like to use as few tools as possible while I'm throwing. It just makes it easier. Yeah, Daryl, I know. Not, not many people throw as much as I do. Well, I don't throw nearly as much as I used to, so. I kind of enjoy the fact that I get to do a lot of other parts of the process now that I didn't get to before. Yeah, Martha, you're welcome. I, uh, I've i probably not always been a clean thrower, but uh, I am now, that's for sure. I don't know that I consciously made that decision, but definitely makes things easier if you stay uh, keep everything cleaner. I hate picking up a tool and having to clean it off before I use it, so that's a big part of it. Probably a lot of it stems from the production background that I have in pottery, just because you learn to do everything you can to give yourself an advantage to making pots quicker. Uh, so that, because when I was working on production, it was like, well, I could take an hour to make all this, or I could take two hours and. I make the same amount of money either way, so if I can get done in an hour, then that's a, I made twice as much money per hour or just got to do something else with my time. So, not a huge fan of the shape of this one. I'm not sure what happened with this one, but. I think the bottom's not wide enough, maybe. is in the east of England. All right. I visited, uh, uh, let's see, I stayed in, in Bath with a friend and then visited Wales and visited a friend in Liverpool, went to London, so went a lot of places. Weave Weaver from Bradley, Illinois, welcome. Thank you. Uh, RB Charger, why don't you use a wire tool to cut the tumblers loose? Uh, I let just about everything dry on the bat, and then once it dries enough on the bat, it will release. But I also don't trim the bottom of hardly anything that I make after the fact. Uh, I just go around the edge with a, uh, a knife or my thumb or whatever, and that smooths it up enough for my needs. So, 
and I throw everything just about everything to the point that it doesn't need to be trimmed as far as thickness goes so it saves me a lot of time and energy as far as that goes also I think that if you can learn to throw things without having to trim I think it shows just as much skill as being a good trimmer I do have nothing against trimmed pots I think they're beautiful I think people that trim do an amazing job and it's a whole nother skill set just not one that I've developed and maybe I will eventually but uh, there are certain things that I trim but not many Hope that answered your question. Alright, let's see. I tried the foot technique you show. It took a few tries, but I think I got it down. Looks awesome to save some. Cool padding. Ooh. I'm glad it worked for you. Congratulations. Uh, how do I gauge the size of the bottom of the tumblers, Reggie? That's that's all just by uh, just by feel. I don't have a gauge set to to make those. It just comes from consistency of throwing. They're not all, of course, going to be the same size, uh, but they'll be pretty close because of how wide I open the base of the the clay ball once I. Um... <laughs> yeah, Sally, you'll take it if I don't like it, huh? That one tumbler, all right got your name on it if it comes out and I just want to throw it away I'll send it to you <laughs> one thing I've learned about pottery even if I don't like it somebody probably will I would prefer to like it myself also <laughs> and somebody else like it enough to purchase it but it's not always the case some pieces I love don't really sell or don't sell quickly and other pieces I don't really care for will be the first thing to go off the shelf and I sit back and scratch my head spot down there I didn't want to try to reach my hand all the way down to this spot down here because it would widen out the middle section of the tumbler so that's why I stuck the butt end of the <laughs> screwdriver down in there and just pushed out against it just to uh, just to push it out. Yeah, anybody who's local, I will be having my in-person kiln opening sale the uh, 17th, 18th, and then 24th and 25th of July here. And then if you're not local but you're interested in buying something, I'll have an online sale from the wood-fired pieces on the, uh, I think it's the 30th. It's the f last Friday in July, put it that way whatever date that is.
Uh, Kelly, do I have any problems with ice cubes fitting in these slender tumblers? Well, I my freezer makes those little half moon ice cubes, so they fit in there just fine. But Bristol, Connecticut, and it's 98 degrees. Wow, Joan, it, it's this is crazy. I know when it was uh, this last weekend, it was like Portland, Oregon. It was like a hundred and plus degrees. Like it was like, but it wasn't that hot here. So. It's just interesting. I mean, it's warm here today. It's in the high 80s, but it's not 98. I know that. Uh, can you use foot? I, I don't know what that means. <laughs> A foot potter. Oh, can I use my foot to throw? I don't know if that's what you're asking, but I've never tried that. Uh, that would be interesting to try. Maybe eventually. Not right. Not today. That's for sure. <laughs> Shelly, yeah, the, uh, that, that happens. Uh, the one you bought, I didn't like straight out of the kiln. Oh, I know exactly which one you're talking about now. You're talking about that funky color combination, the Norse blue with the uh, copper red and strontium, aren't you? Is that the one you're talking about? If so, you got the only one that's like that. I'll probably do it again, uh, uh, but you got the first and the only one at this point that has that color combination on it. And if so, I hope you like it, because it's definitely interesting. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that was an interesting color combination for sure. Need to take this board out back. Let's see, that's two, four, six, eight. That means I've made 16 so far. I don't know how long we've been live. Uh, I don't know if it tells me over here or not. No. Nope. Hey, Karen from London, England. Welcome, welcome. Some things I don't like are the first to sell. Yeah, you never know what people will like. Yeah. That's why Moon Powder is having a version to blue glazes. Everybody likes blue. <laughs> I don't mind blue glazes. I actually love blue. Of course, I'm also... I, I, I like certain pieces because I like them, and I like other pieces because I know they'll sell, and there's a, a happy medium you have to find if you're going to make a living as a potter. So... Yeah, the lighter blue makes the red almost look 3D. Yeah, I, I definitely looked at that piece more afterwards, and it definitely has some qualities that others don't have. So, uh, Sally, uh, these are a pound and a quarter, and they're about seven and a half by a little over four. So, 95 in Dixiefield, Maine. Holy cow, it is hot. 49 minutes. Thank you, Les. Hey, Carter. It's my nephew Carter, everybody. All right, I'll be right back after I take this board out here.
still morning in Arizona. Yep. <laughs> ben Patterson. Mastering constant glazes has a recipe for blue called kill it before it multiplies. Oop, are we having trouble with the stream? Looks like uh, I got a circly wheel over here. Oh, I think we're back. Uh, I actually have Mastering Cone Six Glazes, Ben, and yeah, that's that's a good book. There's a lot of glazes in there that I used when I was firing Cone Six. And uh, oh, Jackie, thanks for being here. Have a good day. Let's see. Maybe we'll move this to another angle for you guys. some variety here I've been brushing glazes but it makes more uh, but I make more I'm thinking I need to go into dipping yeah patty uh, if you're gonna yeah if you're gonna glaze more pots than less yeah I mean if you're gonna start making more uh, dipping into glaze is definitely quicker uh, more even application I mean you can combine the two between uh, brushing some on and dipping others uh, even layering, you could either brush some on the rim and then dip the whole piece, or you could dip the whole piece and then brush some on the rim over top. So you can do uh, you can do little bits of both. All right, let's see. Let's uh, at least fill up this one more board, and then maybe we'll put some handles on coffee mugs. I already have some handles uh, extruded. Uh, I extrude the handles bigger than I need and then I attach them to the mug and then pull them off of the mug. You guys have probably seen my video on that. If not, we'll we'll show you that and talk about it a little bit here in just a minute. Or a few minutes, I should say. Thank you, Carter. Yeah, the red and blue is kind of a neat combination. Supposed to be getting some new glazes from Mako to try in this wood firing if they arrive on time. Uh, they were kind of delayed in being sent, so I was talking to uh, somebody at Mako yesterday in this morning, so they're going to try to move them to the front of the line for shipping so they can be here because we I'm gonna be glazing pots for the wood kiln on Monday and Tuesday it is now Wednesday so if they can get here quick enough then I'll be uh, trying some more glazes in the wood kiln and then I'll try them also in the gas kiln so Christy, I just took a wheel throwing class and bought my own used wheel. I would love any advice you could give. Well, Christy, there's a there's a whole lot of advice. Um, practicing a lot is the uh, is the best advice to begin with, and without without being there to see what skill level you have and what uh, what maybe specifics that I could guide you on, it'd be a little difficult to give you much advice other than. Um, there's no, there's no perfect way or no way that's, you know, that's the right way to throw anything. Uh, I think everybody has to, you know, there are definitely tips that I can give people, especially if I watch them throw, but, uh, there's no one right way to throw anything. So you have to find what works for you. Uh, and I think one of the best things you can do is after you've practiced a lot, then have somebody watch you throw 
or then have a, uh, somebody more experienced to give you tips. Uh, it, you'll, you'll learn a lot more after you've practiced a lot and then you watch somebody throw or they watch you throw. You'll pick up more things to, because you know what to look for and what to ask about uh, as, you, as you've done it a lot. A lot of times you don't know the questions to ask to, when you're starting, so you just haven't. But like I said, but that's I don't know your skill level or how much you've thrown, so. Yeah, Sally, that's great. <laughs> You've been a dipper for 15 years. <laughs> Shouldn't do that. It's not good for your gums, you know. Only somebody in the South. And <laughs> I don't think you mean you're dipping snuff. Dipping glaze, I get you. <laughs> yeah, uh, brushing, I've never had a huge amount of success with brushing other than if I have glazes that I know are going to run quite a bit, then brushing may not matter quite as much because if it's going to run, if it has movement to it, then you won't see the brush strokes and brush lines as much as you, um, if it doesn't run, you'll see those brush strokes a whole lot more. So, Hey Reggie, you're welcome. Alright Sandy, have a good day. Patty, uh, uh, hit, uh, hit, time to head back up the mountain. Uh, you have a good rest of your day, too. Thank you so much. Yeah, Carter, I still have the snake uh, jug. It's not... Uh, hasn't been for sale. The, the, the person that asked me to make the snake jug, I didn't guarantee that I would sell it to him, but I told him that if I ever made one, I'd let him know. And he's coming in a couple weeks, and uh, he asked me if I still had it, and I said, yeah, it's still not for sale, but I have it. But I, I did assure him that when I make another one, he'll he'll uh, he'll get first dibs at it. So. Because I'm sure I'll make another one. I just have to make the time to to do all that work on the snake again, which was very tedious.
All right, Lewis. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Reggie, yeah, that's the million dollar question. I was actually just thinking about that right after, right before you asked it. I don't have any face jugs for this firing. I have a customer that asked me last time I saw him. He said, you got any new face jugs? And I said, no, I don't. And he was upset, but uh, I just haven't been able to make, uh, haven't, haven't made the time to make any. Uh, I have packed my schedule this year quite a bit with online sales and with switching between my gas and my wood kiln and hopefully before the next one I'll I'll make sure that I have time to make some I need to because all the last ones I made are all sold so <laughs> uh, Danny yeah I'm sure she will help some with the live footage. I don't know. It'll be up to her, but everybody loved her narrating the last one, so. <laughs> That's right, Ben. Yeah, if if, uh, if you show them a way, or if they find a way that works for them, and it's not what you showed them, then hey, it's not wrong. Yeah, that's pretty sad. Uh, then they go to college and their college professor says, oh, you're throwing wrong. I was like, okay. It's, 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 I think it's, it's different if, uh, if we're talking about spelling and grammar and math and science and, you know, not that you can't be creative in any of those uh, fields, but there are certain things in some of those fields that are, that are not creative. It's not, uh, you know, People are trying to say it is in some ways, but we won't get into that. But um, yeah, there's as many people as you see, there's probably that many ways of throwing. So I don't see how somebody could say they're throwing wrong. But oh, the hubris of all of us, right? At times. Thank you, Reggie. Yeah, I've, I've made a couple of nice uh, bigger pieces for this firing, and so I definitely made time for those. I have uh, a few commission pieces in there. A couple of them are bigger. Uh, so that's definitely nice to have pieces in the kiln that you know are sold as long as they come out well. i got another spot down there I would like to... I don't know if that's the best of angles for the camera. If so, I can I can move it back to the other one if it's more helpful because I know you can't see my right hand at all uh, from this angle. So you guys can tell me if you'd like. I can switch the camera back to the other side. went to the same college uh, as you but different instructor yeah it's uh I probably better just hold my tongue but <laughs> I'm, I've never been a, a huge fan of uh, the way some things are taught like that so Danielle said she'll narrate the next live stream for a small fee. So you guys better cough it up. <laughs> oh, she meant from me. Oh, oh, I thought. <laughs> I thought, geez, she's making, she's shaking you guys down for some money. She was talking to me. <laughs> So I need to pay her in a vacation to narrate the live stream. So, well, hopefully she'll take me on the vacation with her. That's that. Uh, it won't be too bad of a payment then.
everybody okay inside. Say what? I think everybody enjoyed your narration from the last one. Yeah, I know what you meant. <laughs> That's right. That one's got a little wobble to it. Oh well. And I left a little bit of water in the bottom, but I think it'll be okay. And I didn't wipe off the middle with my sponge after doing this. Woo! I think I like that one less than that other one, Sally, if you're still here. Mainly because of the wobble in it. <laughs> I was distracted. Uh, Sheila, these clay balls are a pound and a quarter, uh, and the mugs are a pound that I throw. Most of them are. I'm glad you loved her narration. Yeah, she did a great job for sure. Helped me out a lot because I just couldn't, couldn't, uh, couldn't do it the whole time, especially on that last Saturday when we finish off the fire and there's just too much going on. Yeah, Sally, we all have our own feel in pottery, that's for sure. Oh, thank you, Les. Oh, Carter, she went back inside, so. <laughs> yeah, no wobble when the wheel stops, that's right. Yeah, but it might, you know, uh, it might, you know, you just have to drink it when you're, you know, standing on uneven ground so that it, it looks straight. Uh, let's see. 
Man, in regards to Mako glazes, I just ordered some and had to go through two different suppliers because just one didn't have all the colors I wanted. <laughs> and blame John the Potter <laughs> for popularizing them. Yes, uh, yeah, they, uh, I'm sure they love John the Potter up at Mako. It's like, man, let's see how much we can, uh, <laughs> I'm sure they've sold a lot of glazes because of John. So. He's a smart businessman as well as a good potter, so. All right, Sally. Take care. Good to see you. Yeah, well, the wood firing is coming up next weekend, so I don't know if I'll do another live stream before it, but I'll definitely do one during, but we'll, we'll see. Have a good day. How much of a sidewall do you have after open? Um... Well, uh, oh yeah, I was, I was getting ready to give you guys a tip. I was thinking about it. Oh, after opening and then pulling it in, it's pretty thick. I mean, it's probably a good, you know, a little over a half an inch thick there. And then I, I do my first pull uh, mainly with my left hand to kind of even that out. And it gets down to, you know, probably a little bit less than a half inch there, three eighths. Um, but this is one of the tips I was going to give you guys is this will take a lot of practice. But one of the things I've learned is after I do that first pull and I get it to that, that spot right there, I take my sponge and I clean the water out of the bottom. So there's no water in the bottom right now at all. And then when I go to pull, I'll wet my sponge and I'll just put it on the rim and I let a little bit trickle down on the inside with guided by my hand and then I wet the outside. So now the inside is wet all the way down to the bottom but there's not water in the bottom. And then I can do my pull so the inside is wet, but it's not soaking wet, and there's still no water in the bottom. And then I'll do the same thing one more time for this pool. Just wet my sponge, and then that water just kind of trickles down on the inside with my hand. So then I can pull. Then I don't have to worry about getting the water out of the bottom because there's no water in the bottom to have to get out. I don't have to use a sponge on a stick or reach down in there and get the water out. So I do that with a lot of pieces that I throw. You'll see that before I start pulling, I'll uh, get the water out of the bottom and then do my pull. That keeps me from having to reach back down in there later and get the water out. That'll take a lot of practice, but if you can learn to do that, it'll save you time and trouble of having to reach back down there or using a sponge on a stick to get the water out of the bottom. I probably throw with less water than most people so there's an advantage I have there as well but alright one more and then we'll uh We'll switch up here. Yeah, Sheila, definitely uh, practice is, is definitely the answer. Uh, if you can do it consistently, um, that's where you'll definitely see the most improvement. So. Still waiting for me to make a granny face jug. Yeah, Kelly, that's... I, I tried. All those couple mugs, I tried doing female faces. And uh, it's just... It's difficult, number one. But also, I don't... Uh, <laughs> sounds strange. I guess it's just a cultural thing. But uh, I don't feel bad making, like, ugly guy face jugs. But if I go to make a female face jug, I don't want to make it ugly. This just sounds disrespectful, I guess. Not that grannies are necessarily ugly, but I, what I do with my face jugs a lot of times is kind of exaggerate a lot of things about features, uh, and I guess I don't mind so much doing that about a guy. Um, but also, I guess uh, in older people, you don't have as much of a distinct difference between the types of faces uh, always because if you get into a whole bunch of wrinkles and all that kind of stuff on an older person they don't necessarily look as much 
male or female <laughs> as maybe they do when they're younger. So, you know, yeah, that's, but I'm also not a sculptor. I'm not, you know, there's, there's a lot of factors. I tried to look at some pictures and, and notice features that an older woman would have versus an older man in their face and try to mimic those, but it was pretty difficult, so. You joke that your college instructor could throw with a thimble of water. Yeah, that's, I mean, it probably is a sign of experience for sure. Um, yeah, throws with no water. Now that, yeah, I don't, I, there are times I throw with no water if I'm joining sections, but in general, yes, I throw. Yeah, lizard, I, Sheila, I would like to make a lizard jug as well. Um, I have I have a really old lizard jug I made that's bis fired that's never been glaze fired out back, um, but the the lizard on it is is not kind of like it's not really proportioned correctly and I don't really uh, like it because of that. Um, the reason I love the snake jug I made is because I really took the time to make sure that the snake looked uh, looked correct in its form. So, all right, be right back. Actually, I have three more of these clay balls. I'm going to throw three more tumblers. I can put on the end of those boards that I carried out. And then we'll switch to the uh, handles. Hey, Aaron. Welcome. Uh, would you talk about pulling walls without having the top flare out? My cylinders always flare and need to be choked back. I'm working on it, but not as good as I want to be. Well, none of us are as good as we want to be. But um, So one of the things I would say is starting with a cylinder that's, that's, uh, that's tapered in like this right here will help you with the beginning of that, as well as when I go to pull. Of course, I'm flaring the top of these on purpose, but when I go to pull, I'm pulling towards the center. Uh, which will really help uh, with it not flaring if you're pulling kind of towards that beehive shape. Uh, a lot of it had, just has to do with your familiar, familiarity with the clay and your control over the clay. Um, sometimes if the clay is too soft, you can't really pull in as much as you'd like because it, it'll kind of, it, it just doesn't have the, the rigidness to, to force it that direction. So that could have something to do with it, but, but most likely it just has more to do with your experience um, and just kind of focusing on pulling towards the center of the wheel for those first, you know, first couple pulls uh, or just pulling straight up and down if you can. But I understand the tendency for it to go out. You know, the, <laughs> the, the pot's, you know, the wheel's spinning around, so then it's always easy for that clay to go outward because that's the, that's the direction you know, it's the, the force of the wheel going around is, is trying to push it that way. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah, Sheila, I definitely, <laughs> I definitely could sell more things with lizards than snakes for sure. Yes, uh, I've had plenty of people walk in and basically were scared of the snake jug that I made over there. So, um, but like I said, I had somebody ask me to make it, and then when I got done, I thought, man, I can't. I don't know that I can sell this. I put so much time into this, and it looks so good. Hey Aaron, no, I'm actually just throwing tumblers for the uh, for the wood firing. Uh, I did make some, you know, test pieces for the gas kiln that were basically this same shape, so I can see where you got that. Uh, but I'm just throwing tumblers for the wood firing next week, and uh, these may get bis fired. Probably will. They probably have enough time. It's only Wednesday. Uh, they can dry in just a, a couple days and then be bisfired. But some pieces I will make and they won't get bisfired just because of the amount of time that it, between when I make them and when the firing is. Uh, let's see, RB, uh, the snake jug is not in a uh, specific video I think there's a video of wood firing number three either unloading uh, and I think it's in that video so yeah I think it was wood fire number three I can tell you I will Yeah, wood fire number three. The snake jug's right over there. I just went and looked at the bottom. It has number three on the bottom, so. One downside of live streaming the last unloading is that I didn't get any pictures of the of the stacks of pots before we unloaded them because my phone was on the tripod doing the live stream the whole time. So this next time I'm going to have to make sure if I do a live stream of the unloading that I have another phone or camera to take some pictures. Because looking back I'm like, well I don't have any pictures on my phone of the whole unloading process. So, and I was like, oh yeah, my phone was doing a live stream, that's why. So. Oh, Les, the snake jug is just a jug that I have that has a snake on the outside of it. I'll show it to you guys in a minute once I finish. The, I got one more clay ball for these uh, tumblers. I have some clay balls here for cereal bowls too, but... Uh, Uh, Natalie, do I ever make goblets? Uh, I do have a video on that on my YouTube channel about making a one-piece goblet. I don't make them anymore. I used to throw them when I worked for other potters. And I've, uh, I think sometime last year, I sat down and I was like, oh, I'm going to make a couple, I'm going to make some goblets. And I made like one or two. <laughs> and I was like, I hate this. I don't know why I'm doing this. <laughs> so I just stopped because they're just a pain in the butt. They're really, you know, they're challenging, uh, and there's not a huge market for goblets, so I was like, you know what, this doesn't make a whole lot of sense right now, so I just stopped and made something else.
there's 27 tumblers thrown, I believe is what it is. Three boards of eight and then three more. Oh yeah, I'm gonna show the snake jug, Danielle. <laughs> Yeah, Barbara, I definitely, uh, I mean, there, there are times that, you know, if you want to, uh, you know, if you're going to make a living at something, you may have to do things you don't want to do or don't like to do, but I've tried real hard to uh, find things that I like to do that I can also sell and make a living at. It's a tough thing to do, but... Uh, uh, Keith, how much does the clay shrink in the two firings? Uh, about, about 12 to 13%. Yeah, Natalie, I love the shape of them because they... Here's the one that I have that's my favorite from in, in the house. Whoops. So this was from wood firing... I don't know. Probably two. The second wood firing. So those should be about this size when they finish. Maybe a little bigger. But somewhere around there. Alright, I'll be right back. Snake jug, and we tilt this up. Has some dust on it, but here's the snake jug. It's a uh, diamondback rattlesnake. As you can see, the design I did on its back, all the scales that I did. I threw the jug and then I uh, built the snake separately and then applied the snake to the jug. So it's got MFK3 third firing and then a snake one on it as my first snake. So. A little rattle. Thank you, thank you. Uh, let's see. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's show you guys uh, kind of my collection of pieces that I have built up for this firing. disconnect the uh, microphone well I have about 80 mugs that need handles between here and there so there's lots of handles there's some salad plates down there back here I have a biskiln cooling down about 200 degrees that's full of mugs and some pitchers in the top I have a few boards here these are left over from the last firing that didn't fit in so I've got about four boards there of pots that are already best fired and glazed some mugs that I just handled yesterday there's some pitchers those need to be best fired still um, there's some platter bowls a bunch of those some jars there's the tumblers that I just brought out there's some more jars and some planters. There are larger pieces over here. There's a large jar there. These uh, two big jars here are the uh, 
commissions for meat curing jars. I got some tall, skinny bottles. I got some other covered jars here. I got a couple jugs with these trees on them. There's a bigger piece back there with a tree on it. Uh, like a 20 pound jar there. There's a large piece with some carving on it and a uh, altered rim. And here's the other large jar that I've made and another storage jar there. And then some, these smaller pieces haven't been best fired yet, but they are decorated with slip. So that's, that's just about it so far. And then whatever else I get made. Let's see. This is my uh, <laughs> my handling station. Oh. Uh, no, my the snake is not hollow. Actually, it is uh, it is solid. So. Yeah, that's a tricky, a tricky thing about that snake is it is not hollow. So I was, I was slightly concerned about it. Let me turn this so I can get the leg out of the way. All right, that's right there. So I have my, my setup for doing um, handles. I usually stand at the, at this rack here, and uh, I have my handles down here. On this board, I've already extruded out some handles. Uh, so I have this die that was a custom-made die that's uh, just kind of a rounded, like a, a rounded die to extrude handles in different sizes. This is a little bit beefier than I like on a mug, but that's why I have it done this way. So then I'll flatten this one end here, attach it to the mug, and then I'll actually pull it off of the mug. I'll pull it from the mug while it's sitting there. And then uh, attach, and then cut a little bit off the bottom, attach the bottom, and then I get a pulled handle off the mug. But I have a good starting point of a, an even handle to start with, which is really helpful. Because uh, if you just start with one big hunk of clay and then just pull handles that way, you can definitely do that. Uh, I've just found it's a little bit easier this way, and it's still a pulled handle. I just don't have to go through as much of a process of pulling to get them the way that I like them. So let me. Uh, move the laptop so I can see chat. You guys still hear me all right? I'm sure you can. I had to unplug the microphone so I could plug in my phone uh, to charge it. But uh, um, Sheila, the wood firing is next uh, next weekend. So it's coming up soon. Hey, Jacob. Welcome, welcome. So anyway, so I'm going to just grab a, a couple mugs. I won't handle all of them on camera, but I'm going to handle uh, some of these on here so you guys can see. Oops. There we go. I usually have a towel close by to dry my hands off on. Um, put a couple buckets here so that I can have my water for pulling my handles right there. Uh, this is kind of an interesting setup. I think I showed this on my video about putting handles on, but uh, because my pots are still on the bats, um, I like to set the bat here and then pull the handle, and in order to do that, I, uh, I, I clamp this ruler down so that when the bat sits here, I can pull against it and it doesn't pull it off of the shelf. <laughs> so, interesting setup, but you guys hear me okay? I don't see any chat happening, so just making sure.
Walmart. Still don't see any chat. You guys still there? Can you guys hear me? Okay, good. All right. <laughs> I'm like, it's. I know it's delayed, but I'm like, I didn't think it was delayed that much. Uh. <laughs> All right, so what I need is I'm going to need my... Uh, I need my paddle, my uh, needle tool, a sponge, clean my hands off with. I use uh, my stamp for my little buttons at the bottom of my handle. <laughs> good, good, good. Sound is a little bit muted. Yeah, I don't have my microphone plugged in anymore. Um, here, let me plug that back in, and then uh, that'll definitely help. All right, should be better now. Do I ever like to experiment with handle shapes and sizes? Oh, I definitely have, because I, uh, just not too far in the past, I, I was doing uh, all extruded handles. I didn't pull them at all, and now I've been doing pulled handles. Uh, yeah, the delay definitely is a thing, so it's part of live streaming. All right, so. Um, so what I do for my handles is take the, uh, one end of the handle and I paddle it to make it thicker on that end. I have my bowl of slip here. And then instead of putting scoring and put slip on the pot, I actually just put slip on the end of the handle. And then I get my hand wet, and then I can and then I can pull that because it's still attached to the bat. It makes it a whole lot easier to pull. And they don't always move forward, but if it moved up, it would at least catch on this so that it didn't pull right off of the. Uh... And I usually keep some of this extra clay here to the side to make my buttons out of. Uh, less, uh, these mugs were thrown actually, hmm, I'm trying to remember now, these might have been thrown early yesterday or the night before, uh, but they've been covered up with plastic ever since, and then there are another set of mugs that I threw last night, uh, later last night, and I left them uncovered all night and then just covered them up this morning so that they would uh, last. So I set, I always uh, handle these and then set them aside and I come back later when the handle stiffs up a little, stiffens up a little bit and I put the thumb grip on. Yeah, let's see if I can get you guys zoomed in a little bit more. There we go. Yeah, these couple here are getting a little dry, so I may uh, 
I may spray these down after putting the handles on them and cover them back up with plastic so they dry a little slower to make sure that I don't have any cracks in these handles. Uh, of course, I've got plenty of slip that I've added here that's in between the handle and the pot. But adding a little bit of uh, spraying these a little bit will help as well, as well as covering them back up so that they dry slower. I always go back and forth on this shape pot, whether I want to have a long handle or a really short handle. Uh, but uh, Yeah, Natalie, I love a good thumb grip on a pot. I definitely do. I think it uh, makes, them, makes them feel wonderful in your hand. I've actually been skipping the step where I used to take the brush and brush around here. I've been trying to clean that up when I first attach it so that after the fact I don't have to come back and, uh, and, and clean that up. I can just uh, clean it up before I do the handle or before I before I do the bottom of the handle this one here has some white slip on the outside I actually was trying to do a swirl uh, kind of like this and uh, it really messed up <laughs> So then I just took my sponge and, and was going to clean it off and it just kind of smeared over the whole thing. And I thought, okay, well, I guess I'll just have uh, white slip over the whole thing and maybe I'll do some more slip decoration over top of that. I don't know yet, but uh, I've had a hard, a hard time this time figuring out what kind of mugs I really wanted, what shapes, what... Uh, um, I was making some mugs and I was like I'm trying to do a certain shape and I didn't I didn't make one I was happy with and so I got some odd shaped mugs that I've never had before because I've been playing around with the different shapes um, but that's that was right there what I'm talking about I, I went ahead and tried to clean all this up before I pull it and before I attach the bottom and that way I can uh, you don't have to come back with that Don't have to come back with the uh, brush and clean that off around there. So I'm going to do one a little bit shorter here. So if I do a short handle, it's like a probably like a two finger handle. It just comes like oh, that's a little small. <laughs> Maybe that'll be a one one finger handle, but. Oh yeah, these, these are going to have a thumb rest. I just can't put them on yet uh, because the handle uh, are so soft. I'll come back later after they stiffen up a little bit and I, I attach the thumb, uh, the thumb grip. So now here's the one that I'm talking about with the, uh, with the swirl on it like I was trying to do on that other one. You've switched from slip to magic water. Uh, yeah, uh, magic water, is that like vinegar and water? Yeah, definitely, you can use uh, vinegar if, if the pot's starting to get a little dry. Um, I thankfully have not had a lot of trouble with handles not attaching, so. <laughs> yeah, I'm licking the ball of clay before I stick it on there. I probably don't even have to do that because the handle's so wet that I'm putting it on there. It's just kind of a habit. <sighs> but saliva does work for, for joining, so.
set a few of these over here uh, to my left first and then I'll start going back on the table once I've cleared a little bit of space. Magic water is mostly water with the addition of sodium silica and soda ash. Oh, okay. This one is a little dry on top for sure. I don't have any vinegar uh, vinegar out here, otherwise I'd probably put a little bit on that one. But Ben, everybody's going to be wanting to know the ratios of uh, sodium silicate and, and uh, soda ash now. <laughs> if you have a recipe or ratios. Or maybe it's public knowledge or online somewhere. Uh, I'm not really cutting the uh, Keith. Am I cutting the bottom of the handle at an angle? No, I'm just cutting it to make it shorter. Um, not really cutting it at an angle. Um, what I do is is when, once I cut it and then I go to attach it, I'm basically taking that flat part right there, and then I'm just pushing it to try to make it rounded, just so that it looks good finished as far as the the shape of it there just flatten it out so that it's rounded and then I go and, and look at it from the side and either do a, 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 a low curve like this or I do a high curve depending on the shape of the pot um, and my button maker is a hand as a homemade uh, stamp from a uh, drawer pull just in case you're wondering Yeah, and, and a lot of people are surprised that I don't, don't do any scoring. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Uh, one thing I don't like is when I see scoring that goes out past where the handle is actually attached. Because uh, then it's like a lot of people score like a really big area and then where they put the handle on it doesn't cover that full area. And so unless you take time to clean that up, you actually see the spot where the, where the pot was scored. So, Oh yeah, you're welcome for the close-up. I should have done that earlier. Here, we'll, we'll do it again.
Like I said, if I tried to put the thumb grip on this right now, this is still too wet and I would totally deform the handle by doing that, but just waiting uh, maybe like an hour, come back and there, I have to pick them all back up again. That's the downside. Just gonna spray these with water real quick and cover them up. Here's a couple of the funky shapes I was talking about. <laughs> I just got into all kinds of stuff. The funny thing was is I made this pot with the grooves in it like this. And then I, I go on Instagram and John John has a story of him throwing some coffee mugs. And he's like, oh, I got a new a new design here that I was trying out where I put you know, through this straight sided one and I put these grooves in it with my rib and I was like, I just did that. Like, neither one of us did it because we saw each other, but we both did it on the same day. I was like, that's funny. I sent him a message and I'm like, you just copied me. He could have actually thrown his before I threw mine, I don't know, but either way. It's pretty funny. Well, good. I'm glad to hear that, happy family. I'm glad you love the mug. I drink out of them all the time myself, too. Of course, <laughs> I have readily available a lot of uh, <laughs> seconds. <laughs> so, But I do keep some firsts as well, because I usually keep a mug out of every firing, because it's just nice to have a, a new mug and one to remind you of each firing. So, At least wood firing, that is. I don't keep one out of every gas firing, but... There, I didn't lick that one. Like I said, I know the handles are wet enough that I don't have to lick them, but it's just a habit. So these uh, these handles are cut to like four and a quarter inches, and then by the time I pull them, they're a bit longer. Of course, I made them shorter by doing that. Hey Luis, from Brazil, welcome. We're just putting some handles on these coffee mugs. Well, we, I'm putting handles, y'all are watching. <laughs> I was talking to myself the other day about something and I, I think it was, I, I was just thinking about all the different pots I have for the kiln, for this wood firing. And I said something about, well, we, we made a, a, you know, made the large jar on live stream. And I was like, well, what am I talking about? We, I mean, I, you know, y'all were all here watching when I made, or a lot of you were here watching when I made that large jar, but <laughs> it was just funny the way I was thinking about it, talking to myself as if it was we. 
Oh, Kelly. Oh, goodness. Well, thank you so much. You're stuck now, though. That means you can't stop. So my uh, my high school pottery teacher, when I took in those uh, gifts here a while back, because he had a piece from my first firing, but I took him a piece from the second, third, and fourth. And uh, he said, well, this means that I have to start coming to all the subsequent ones so I can keep my collection going. And I'm like, well, you don't have to, but yeah, that sounds good. Here's another funky shape that I made. I wanted to make some shorter mugs that would fit under my shelf that I do with my platter bowls, which is a four and a half inch tall shelf. And so I'm going to make some more mugs that are out of three quarters of a pound instead of a pound that are under four and a half inches high. Um, but this was a pound of clay and I was like, man, if I want to keep it short and using a pound of clay, I got to make a really wide base or, you know, something different about it. So, um, I mean, these are kind of cool, but I'm not sure how practical they'll be. They're going to take up a lot of space in somebody's cabinet because of the wide base on them, but I think they'll look pretty neat. I'll have to see what they're... When they come out of the kiln, I'll, I'll definitely uh, hold one and see how I like it. I might end up keeping one. Who knows? These definitely don't need to be as long as all the other ones either, so. Yeah, it definitely makes for a smaller space for a handle with that shorter mug like that. But. Tried to pull that one a little thinner right there so it would have wouldn't be quite so chunky on the uh, on the pot. Yeah, I can do that, Reggie. I'll show a close-up of the shape of the handle before I put it on. All right. Or before I paddle it is what he said. Uh, yeah, now I'm on to another shape mug, but I have several of this shape, or at least 
variations of this shape. These are going to be a longer handle for sure. Um, so this is the uh, what I have right now. So the you can see it's kind of just a a wide oval shape. They're cut like I said, four and a quarter inches. Here I'll move you guys over to this side now, so you can maybe see from this angle. put the handle on like this. I like really good soft clay for doing the handles that way when I go to attach the top here I can really push in that clay to get it to smush up against the the mug and then when I go to pull it it's not really difficult to pull because it's uh, it's fairly soft clay I also cut off the bottom of the handle because as I pull it, it gets kind of all like wonky. And so by cutting it, I get a nice uh, even cut that I can then, when I go to smush it up against the bottom of the mug, I can shape it the way I want and it's not all like funky. Um, Do I make any oxidation glazes? I have not actually. Uh, I mean, the glazes that I use could be used in oxidation or reduction. Uh, but uh, yeah, I do plan on making. Uh, I'm going to make a video on just the idea of how to mix your own glaze. Uh, not necessarily. I'm just going to pick a recipe out of a, a book or online and just mix it and test it. And just to go through the process of how I would do that from start to finish. Because I think a lot of people are not sure about mixing their own glazes because if they've just never done it, it's just so much more simple to buy a commercial glaze. And although I have started using some commercial glazes, I still love mixing my own glaze. Um, it's definitely cheaper.
here's some I did some like random swirls in that are that same shape that we just had. We got a handle here with a, a little air bubble where it blew out. I'm just going to take a little clay and water and fill that in before I blunt the end of it and then save that handle instead of having to extrude another one. Because I'm going to pull it anyway, I'll, I can kind of get away with that. Uh, do I measure specific gravity of my glazes? I do not. I never have. I've never never had a hydrometer. I've never done specific gravity any other way. I just mix them to what I think looks right. And <laughs> I think if I was doing you know, if I was doing massive volumes and I was doing a lot of wholesale or I was doing something where I really needed, you know, consistent results over a long period of time, then I think it would make sense to do specific gravity and stuff like that. But as long as you're okay with some variation, you know, in your glazes, um, which can, you know, that can be disappointing at times there, you know, if you mix it wrong or don't have it thick enough or thin enough. You can make a mess, but yeah, Daryl, I've been planning to. It uh, it uh, it definitely won't be while I'm glazing. Uh, I mean, I might be able to do like a live stream while I'm glazing for the wood firing, but I'm not sure. But that's also a, a time that's pretty, you know. It's getting down to crunch time when I get to that point, and yeah, I get all like, you know, I'm a pretty calm person, but when it gets close to wood firing, I get all wired up because I'm just trying to get everything done and have so much going on and so much, uh, depending on you know things going right making sure I have enough pots have them all ready in time because I got people showing up to help load and fire the kiln and all that so I haven't made any tea mugs this time around either I've been just making all coffee mugs and I have to put the slit in the rim if I'm going to make tea mugs uh, the ones that I make with a little slit in the rim I have to do that before they get to this dryness so uh, probably won't have any in this wood firing but I haven't been selling as many of them anyway Angelique from the Netherlands welcome thank you for being here My uh, my low battery mode indicator showed up and uh, and stopped the stream. <laughs> so hopefully we're back now. But uh, that means we'll have to be ending soon. Sorry about that, everybody. Well, I have any pedestal style mugs in this firing. I have not made any yet, or I think I, maybe I made one. Uh, you're talking about the, like the hourglass ones that have the little uh, foot on the bottom, if that's what you're talking about. Um, yeah, I've been going back and forth about different, uh, different kinds to make. Hey, Kathy. I've uh, been trying to learn this handle method with extruded blanks a lot end up too soft to shape when pulled but I'm thinking I'm pulling too much yeah uh, definitely yeah if you pull them too much uh, you probably either need to start with a thicker handle to begin with 
or a longer piece and then you can make sure that you've pulled it and not pulled it too much because um, yeah you should be able to shape it fairly easily when uh, doing a handle like this because uh, I don't do a whole lot of shaping once I once I pull it and then I cut the bottom and attach it as you've been watching um, it's usually pretty easy to handle All right, Kelly, I'll have to make sure I make a couple, uh, I'll make some more like that. Yeah, so I just gradually kind of let that hang. Then I cut off the bottom. And then when I go to shape it, I kind of pick up the bat and then just lift this up. And I kind of eyeball how straight it is like that and then attach the bottom and then uh, I have two uh, J Jacob I have two um, probably like 60 to 70 pound jars uh, that are going in this firing and then I have uh, some 30 pound ish uh, uh, those meat storage jars that I have and then I also have um, some 20 pound uh, pots. I have several different sizes, but the largest is definitely the, uh, the two big jars that are like probably 60, 70 pounds of wet clay. Well, Kelly, actually, you're mix, you're missing uh, different styles now because I've got some I've never made before, like that one I was just doing with the the really wide short, uh, really wide base, the short one. So, <laughs> see, people like you, I just got to keep making new styles of mugs, as well as numbering them for each firing. You know, kind of like Apple. They just come out with a new phone every year, and everybody thinks they got to go buy one. Well, my battery's probably getting even lower again, and it might cut off again here in a minute, so um, let's, uh, <clears throat> like I said, normally what I do is just take uh, all the mugs off the table just a couple at a time, and I go back and put them back, and then... Um, and then come back like an hour or so later and uh, and put the uh, put the thumb grips on. So anyway, thank you guys uh, as always for being here for the live streams. Um, appreciate all the questions. I hope uh, I was able to help answering some of those. And uh, yeah, I don't know if we'll do another live stream before the firing, but firing will be next uh, Thursday night, Friday, and Saturday. So I'm, I'll, I'll try to fit one in between now and then, but we'll see. Uh, there's a lot going on between now and then just to make sure I got everything got enough pieces ready uh, for this firing so uh, yeah uh, and yeah the uh, in-person sale will be the 17th to 18th and the 24th and 25th here at my studio and then the online sale is the the Friday last Friday in uh, in July uh, at noon patron uh, patreon pre-sale will be the day before the night before uh, but I'll send the message to everybody uh, about that if you're a patron. Uh, any information you need, just go to my website, MatthewKellyPottery.com uh, for any of the web information. And uh, let's see. Yeah, Kelly, you have to get a bigger china cab cabinet. Do I catalog all my work? No, I don't. Um, I definitely keep, uh, you know, some things that I continually do. But 
So, anyway, thank you guys as always for being here, and we'll see you uh, in the next one. And uh, yeah, you guys stay well, and uh, we'll see you soon. All right.